welcome to the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker team. And I'm Yetta Decker, and I'm here today with kind of a special guest, but not really because she's part of the team. And I'm here with... Candace St. Louis. Actually, Candace Decker St. Louis, as I say it. Anyway, as I always introduce Candace, she's been in the industry for quite a few years now, half a dozen or so now, yeah. and really she's been around it since she was four. So it is all she has ever known. So yeah, you can do the math and figure out I've been in the industry 25 years. She's been around it since she was four. So anyway, she's the better part of 30 now. Who knew I had a 30-year-old kid? But anyway, um, as I introduce her, generally is the nicer version of me. And so even today, strategically, to create an illusion, I wore white, ensured she wore black, yeah. so that it looks like I'm the nicer version of her. Nice. nice. You like that? <gasps> no. And I didn't warn you at all, did I? No, you didn't. That's perfect. Anyway, after the most asked question, which is how's the market, which we've done a couple of shows on, and we pretty much do one every month. So if you're interested in that topic, please go back to the archive shows, both video format as well as audio format on chri.ca or deckerteam.com and that's decker double k no c's deckerteam.com or chri.ca and you'll see well over 100 shows there now or episodes i guess we call them and all kinds of great information on the market pretty much every month we do an update there and the other most frequently asked question what is that candace it's it's uh how do I get the most maximum return for my property or my house? Yeah, what renovation should I do? What mm -hmm. shouldn't I do? And why should I do it? Right. And do I have to do anything? All that yeah. kind of stuff. That's right. So how do you answer that question, Candace? <laughs> well, it all depends on the property and, and what strategy they want to use. Um, and yet the m biggest thing you can get um, to do, actually, is just paint and you get the most value for that. What have I just painted? If you just paint it, it freshens it up. It makes it look like there's not as much to do. And yet the funniest thing is that most buyers decide to paint anyways once they're in there to make it their own. It's kind of funny, isn't yeah. it? The paint is what soothes or attracts or compels people toward a property. Yeah. And yet often, not always, I have seen folks that said they were going to paint a whole house because they were terrible colors, and yet five years later they still haven't painted, so right. you do see both extremes. Mm -hmm. However, what you're saying is that although it's the compellent, yes. the color of the walls, the neutrality often, yeah. or how it specifically suits the buyer. Right, or the fact that they feel like it's been taken care of and there's not scuffs and it's maintained and that sort of thing. Right, so paint yeah. will give you that um, sense. Yes. Okay. And so what if I am a homeowner and I have just painted my house and then I call you Yes. and I want to bring the property to market and I want to expose it. What do I need to paint again? No, not necessarily. If it's a fresh coat, it's hopefully in a neutral color. Well, you're going with color. I <laughs> yes. knew we'd get there. Yes. So if you've just painted it in burnt orange. Yes. Unless it's one wall, an accent wall in a particular family room. We just sold a home actually that had some nice tangerine colored walls and it was fine because it was a lower level and it didn't really take away from the home itself. Had that been in the front entrance way, right. even would. though it had been done yesterday. Yeah, we would most likely recommend a more neutral color. Right. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So when I paint, is it just throw something on the walls? What do I do? It's not just throw something on the walls. Um, we say pay particular attention to trim, um, baseboards around your windows, your doors, um, those things that get a little bit more wear. And once they get a fresh coat of white paint, generally, uh, they just brighten up the place. Yeah, and when we say white paint, it can be an off-white or a mm -hmm. soft white or an Oxford white, one of those sorts of things, depending on the color in the rest of the house. I mean, there's two trains of thought. You go really crisp on the trim, usually a semi-gloss, um, and then, or something just a little less crisp on the trim, depending on the accent, the rest of the colors in the right, house, right? right? So white, but not necessarily snow white. Yes. Right? That's right. Clean is the big trick. Color Clean. trim was something we did back in the 90s and even, mm -hmm. I guess, into the early 2000s and back into the 80s. That was still something that was done. Today, really color trim is pretty much a thing of the past. It is, yeah. It's neutral, not necessarily even natural trim. That really is also something that 
pretty much has gone by the wayside. Mm -hmm. It's painted trim. And I think that the hardest thing in the world for people to do is paint over that beautiful, expensive oak trim that's got three coats or five coats of varnish on it. It's beautiful. And yet it darkens a house a whole lot. Yes. And unfortunately dates it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unless it's like the country cabin in the woods, then it, there's a place for it. But generally something in the city, most people want white. Right. Or off-white. Yeah. And do I have to paint my home if I'm bringing it on the market? You're telling me that it's the most, the greatest return on investment. That's right. Do I have to do it? Or can I not just sell my house the way it is? You can sell it the way it is. There is heavy competition. Um, and so you're competing against those that have prepared their home for market. And so um, generally buyers want a deal. If it's not pristine or perfect like the other ones they're seeing, they want a discount. Right. So homes are in a beauty contest today. Absolutely. And people will pay more money for the winners of the beauty contest. Yeah. And they'll go quicker, generally. Right. So it's not just a matter of dollars, you're saying, Candace. Mm -hmm. It's also a matter of time. Yes. So often I think about, well, if I want to sell something quickly, I just need to price it really low. That works too. And yet there's an, another strategy that you can price it right and present it um, properly for market. And then? And then it will go quick as well. Right. So mm -hmm. you don't have to underprice a property to sell it quickly. No, you don't have to. Positioning it to look beautiful. Mm -hmm. So after paint, yes. painting on the trim, painting on the doors, the walls, and I suppose when you first come in, that's even more important. And don't forget the paint outside. Right. Yeah. The garage doors. The garage doors, the front doors. The curb appeal is huge as well because generally when someone walks in a home, it's the first 30 seconds once they arrive, whether they're deciding if this is the house for them or not subconsciously and starting with yeses or nos for that particular house. Right. So they sense a home that's more right. than they actually rationalize yes. the home. Mm-hmm. Perfect. And so after I get my painting done, I spruce it up outside. I touch up the landscaping because you're talking that's curb appeal. So yes. that's somewhere I can spend some money. If I have a home in the winter time, I want to have the walkway shoveled. I want to have the driveway cleared, mm -hmm. the full width of the driveway, not just a little path to get into the home. Yeah. Because that's part of the experience. It is. Yes. Right? People experience a home, yeah. especially residential property that's going to be for the purpose of living in. Mm -hmm. right? A little different if we're going commercial or investment property. The experience of the home is not as important, especially to a savvy investor. However, to a new investor, it's every bit as important right. because they can't yet dis dis detach themselves from the sensing of the home in somewhere I'd like to live. Right. Right? When it's a newer investor. So mm -hmm. we need the outside beautiful, trim yes. up the trees, put some fresh cut flowers, cut. keep the grass cut, yep. all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then after I've got the outside pretty, my painting pretty, then what's the next mm -hmm. most important thing to think about? Uh, generally flooring. Absolutely. And so mm -hmm. what would your comment be around flooring? What should, what should our listeners and our viewers think about when they're just doing a general assessment of flooring? A general assessment? Well... I, if it was carpet, I would say definitely give it a cleaning, um, no matter how old it is, unless it's brand, brand new, but generally a, a good cleaning um, because over time it gets a little worn. And then if it's stretched, I would definitely recommend getting someone in to stre stretch it back into shape. Um, and or, so when you say stretching, replace. right, you're just talking about when there's little waves in the carpet, there's little That's bubbles, good. and it, over time the moisture in the home mm -hmm. has caused the carpet to actually get larger than the space that it's filling, right. and so you get nice ripple effect, and that just is a turnoff. And for a few hundred dollars, you can have one of our service providers come in, or you know somebody yeah. that you know, and have them pull the carpet back, cut off the excess carpet, tack it back into the sides, That's and right. it looks so much better. Mm -hmm. It does. And, and then someone comes in and doesn't say, this needs to go today. Right, because it feels like, and always, I think, my experience has been, and I know yours is the same, you've worked with a lot of buyers over this last half a dozen years, yes. and what they say is the right value of what it costs to repair something. Yeah, they pretty much double it. 
Yeah, yeah. pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes triple it. Yeah, yeah. And when they're calculating the value, they never calculate the value of doing it themselves, even if they're going to do it themselves. No. They calculate the value based on what it, or the cost, the expense, based on what it would cost someone else to do it. Right, exactly. Yeah, is that kind of fun to combat? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's an interesting battle, um, and you got to, as a realtor, bring your buyer back into reality. Um, n that won't exactly cost that much, and and just rationalize the property with them if you see that it's something that suits their needs, and, and if it has doesn't the suit bones their needs, and the structure yeah. that suits them. Right, and if yeah. it doesn't suit them, then you just let it go. And just let it go. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. That sounds like a plan. So stretch carpets. That's yes. one comment around flooring. If it has carpets, we want to make sure they look clean and we want to make sure they look tight and attached well to the home. Mm -hmm. And then what, what else about flooring? Uh, hardwood is a great seller. Most people look for hardwood now. Um, some people don't even go view homes if they see carpet in the houses. They're getting quite picky. Um, so they'll only choose the homes to view based on if there's hardwood on the main level. Right. And I have that conversation with all my buyers, and I know you do too. Mm -hmm. You know what? We have handymen all over the place mm -hmm. that for not a whole lot of money can come in there and replace the carpet with hardwood that's right and the amazing thing is you're usually going to purchase that home for less than it's really worth right so if it costs you six thousand dollars to replace that area from carpet to hardwood if we're talking you know a modest home mm -hmm. square footage on the main level not a high high-end hardwood which we'll talk about in a yes. minute from a seller's perspective then um it, you'll probably buy the home for ten to fifteen thousand less, and the cost of the repair might be six or seven thousand. That's right. So you're ahead of the game if you buy one that has carpet. Right. And so you're constantly educating your buyers about that. Yeah. And yet you, as the seller, you're taking the hit on that because that's the reality. The buyer isn't even going to go look at it mm -hmm. unless they're getting a bit of a deal. That's right. And generally, the seller in that circumstance is more willing to negotiate. And has been waiting for an offer and, and, and waiting for quite some time. Often. Yeah. Because it's amazing that, silly as it is, hardwood, when you first walk in, not necessarily in the entryway, right. but in that living room, dining room on the main level, changes the picture significantly. Mm -hmm. And it almost doesn't matter what price range. No. No. Even We've recommended some of our sellers, even in townhomes, starter homes, if you want to get it so quickly you need to change a little bit of your carpet into hardwood because there's not much square footage in those homes and and then they sell quickly yeah it's quite different mm -hmm. isn't it mm -hmm. so and what kind of hardwood am i putting in? am i putting in like laminate hardwood am i putting engineered hardwood am i putting real hardwood and what kind of color is most advisable to do if i'm going to put the effort in right um generally real hardwood um, if you are in the basement, then you can do um, a laminate or an engineered, um, but we advise real hardwood. Um, and then a medium tone. Um, dark is and was in style, but it's kind of coming out a little bit. People are understanding the nuisance of it shows everything. It shows your footprints in the summer when you have flip-flops on and you take them off and you have your bare feet on the hardwood. You, you see those prints. and um, So light is the most forgiving, and yet um, it's it's pretty much a thing of the country. Well, it comes and goes, it does doesn't come it? And like go. all the colors really seem to, you almost have to look at the particular home. Mm -hmm. and then make a decision based on the actual house as to what color. Right. And even what width of plank. Yes. Because, I mean, slightly wider is probably more advisable, but if you've already got some in the house and you want to add a little bit more, you're better to match it the best you can. So with flooring, we don't want to see, buyers don't want to see seven or eight different types of flooring in a house. No. We ideally want to see fewer number of variety. Right. And just have it repeated in different rooms throughout. Yeah, when they see too many types of flooring throughout the house they get go into overwhelm and they feel like they have to remove everything and start from over right rather than just change out the one or two rooms that really create the overwhelm right so again the cost seems to come through the roof when really there's no need mm -hmm. so and pre-finished hardwood yeah is that fine that is more than fine yeah. depending on the price range of property right because if we're talking in the million dollar properties then refinishing hardwood or installing 
finished on site yes. would probably be more advisable. And we really do cover all spectrums of the market. Mm -hmm. So we're talking right now in generalities mm -hmm. and recognizing that the price range you're in does change whether you might put an exotic hardwood in or not, That's right. or more of a standard. Yeah, most, you know. most buyers don't um, care or notice really the difference between pre-finished or finished on site or some even don't understand the difference between laminate. It's an education as we go through the house. This is laminate, this is pre-finished. Well, more the engineered because laminate is pretty evident. Some of the higher quality laminate now, yeah, they, they're having a tough time. That's and, good. Yeah. And so that has less of a negative impact. So on a lower right. priced home, you may well be able to do that. Yes. In a high end home, unless it's in a basement or on concrete, on slab, you wouldn't do that. No, you wouldn't. So if you're just joining us now on the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker team, I'm Yetta Decker and I'm here with Candace Decker mm -hmm. St. Louis. You got to know she's a kind of part of, part of me. And <laughs> so although she changed her name to St. Louis, much to my I don't know. Not my joy. Anyway, she did, and he's a great man, so that's a good thing. Anyway, we've been talking about what is the most frequently asked question after how's the market, and that is what should I do in my home mm -hmm. if I want maximum return when I do put it on the market? And maybe I'm not putting it on the market today, but I'm putting it on in a few years. Right. What should I start doing now? And so if you want to hear that, we've covered a couple of topics already, paint and flooring in particular, in the first half of the show, so go back and watch that. And if you're joining us now, we'll carry on to the rest of the topics. So anything else around flooring, Candace, that buyers respond to or and or don't respond to? Right. Uh, generally, we haven't talked about the ceramic and the linoleum and that sort of thing yet, uh, the stick-on tile. Um, that sort of thing. You can get some really expensive stick-on tile now, even more than um, ceramic yeah. or porcelain. And you grow it in between them as well, and it's a warmer floor. It's softer. Softer. And your, your back doesn't hurt. Yeah, that's right. So I just had a client put it in their house, and it's over $4 a square foot, I think closer to 6 And so that's a very expensive linoleum-type mm -hmm. option. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. And that's fine. Right. So I no think one it's, knows the difference. Right. So it's more about what do you need if you're still going to live in the home for a season, mm -hmm. what do you need it to feel like and function like? Right. And then you want to stay ideally with all flooring types somewhat neutral. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. I know I've done green in a home that I had and the buyer that's bought it has decided although it's lovely and there's nothing wrong with it, it's being ripped out. <laughs> and so... And the buyer was Candace, so that's yeah. kind of an inside joke here. Yeah. yeah. When the son-in-law says he wants to buy your house, it means you did something right. Yes. And yeah. So, yeah. and yeah. funny enough, I I picked that green tile out when I was seventeen or sixteen, um, and so yeah, times have changed, and you just want something more neutral and of the time period. Not that there's cracks, and not that there's yeah. anything wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just it's. Green. Yes. And it's even subtle green, folks. So maybe you should call <laughs> in and have a conversation with Candace. Tell her it's not the right thing to do. No. Anyway, flooring is very personal. And so the more yeah. neutral you can be, the better. And then you use your color where? Where would you put lots of color? You would put color in your accents, in your pillows, in your vases in things around your house, your little... In your artwork? In your artwork is a great spot. And artwork, as we're talking, actually, as much as it's something that you'll be taking home with you or to your next new home, um, it is a great investment as right well. Right after paint and flooring and general maintenance on the outside, artwork. Artwork is, is huge. Massive. Mm -hmm. Take down all the beautiful little pieces of artwork that most of us have in our homes, and I had so much in my house too, Yeah. and take that down and replace four pieces with one. One big piece. It provided the wall suits it. Yes, absolutely. Above a couch or above your master bed, or there's places for it. Um, and it just makes a difference to the buyers. Because there's not as much fighting for their, there's not as much competition fighting right. for their attention. Right. There's just, it's a, a much easier view. So in fact, something that you don't even take with you. Yeah, you don't leave there. Right, you do take it with <laughs> yeah. you. Sorry, I'm tripping on my words. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So something that you take to your new home actually helps your, your house. So 
Right. And then we also, I'd say after pictures, the next thing is furniture. That makes a big difference. Right. So cleaner like lines. Cleaner lines, yeah. The right size furniture for the room. Mm -hmm. So I know we had a home not that long ago that we were having, they had, it was lovely. There was really nothing wrong with it. It was traditional furniture in a little more of an upscale neighborhood and the furniture was more traditional and we were getting showings and no offers. Mm -hmm. And the price was good relative to the other homes in the market. We were getting more showings than anybody else in the neighborhood because the other realtors were calling me saying, I can't sell mine, I can't even get people in the door. How are you doing? I said, we're doing great. Right. We're getting lots of activity, we're just not getting the offers. And so it was really important that we, for these folks, that we get the home sold in a timely fashion and so we actually took their furniture, they put it in storage, yeah. and we actually do have a home preparation service that's part of our premium service for our clients. And we put new furniture, mm -hmm. simple lines, not very much of it, enough, and the home sold within about a week. Yeah. And they got settled and they got moved and we didn't change the price. No. Nope. We didn't change anything except clean lines and we'd already done the artwork thing so that had already happened prior to with their furniture we'd already re removed their smaller pieces and put in some bigger pieces mm -hmm. cleaner and yet the furniture was vital mm -hmm. so not that you have to do this on every house it depends on where you are it depends on your competition it depends on your price range these yeah. are just very inexpensive things that can make a large significant impact on how the home is received by a buyer yeah yeah. So after those things, what else would you say are vital? Um, after furniture, it may, it really depends on the house. Right. There's not much more you can do. I mean, you can do bedding, you can neutralize things, um, and yet it's really a conversation once we come into the seller's house and say what's next. Right. And, and mm -hmm. the other one that often comes up is should I not have new kitchens and new bathrooms? Right. If I have dated bathrooms and kitchens, what, what's the counsel there, Candace? Yeah. Um, depending on the price point, depending on the motivation, depending on the timing, if they want to get their house sold now and don't have time to put in a new kitchen and a new bath, then we just stage it to make it look as great as it can. Um, I had a property that had um, really nice countertop, didn't have the granite in the bathroom. It had brass handles and it had um, a really light oak finish and the rest of the house was a little bit more modern so I said let's just quickly stain the um, cabinet to a darker brown. Let's change the handle to pewter and it changed the bathroom completely. No one knew it was an original from the 80s cabinet. Right, so mm -hmm. little things like that. Again, paint is your best friend. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter where we're talking in a home, paint can totally revitalize. Mm -hmm. Even the home that you sold not long ago, you had restained <clears throat> the kitchen cabinets to a darker stain because there is a product out there that you can actually get that has varnish in the stain. Mm -hmm. So instead of having to strip the cabinets down to bare wood, you can actually put a darker color yeah. on top of a lighter color, which mm -hmm. totally transformed that kitchen. Transformed it completely. I had agents in there, just co-workers that I said, give me your honest opinion. And uh, they said, wow, when did you replace the entire kitchen? And I said, that's an original kitchen. I've just glorified it, you know put in the granite, put in the nice backsplash, stain the cabinets and change the handles. And and I fooled a lot of my coworkers that it wasn't well, a brand Well, not really new. fooled. Well, it's just, it, it appears to be more than it is. Yeah, and they didn't notice that this is an 80s kitchen. They just saw it as a very modern yeah. kitchen. Yeah, That's awesome. And so kitchens and bathrooms, you will not always get 100% return on them. It often depends on what's already been done in the house. Right. Right, if I have a house that's already had new windows, because if we've got really old, drafty, ruined windows, windows can be a good investment. Generally speaking, you're not going to get 100% return on windows. No. So we don't mention those as a must do to get it on the market unless your windows have cracks and the seals are blown and, and that kind leaking. of thing and they're leaking well then that's a different conversation mm -hmm. then you may need to do the windows or at least replace the glass in a in a newer home if you've got seals that are blown replacing glass maintenance items are a must i really yeah. would say that maintenance follows right after paint 
Yes. We talked about exterior maintenance, and we'd also say interior maintenance is the same thing. Interior maintenance, absolutely. And also the... Clean the furnace filter. Yes, yes. Yeah. So check out the HRV. Make sure it's running. Clean out the drum there. Have your furnace serviced, your AC furnace, if you haven't done it in a long time. Mm -hmm. Just have everything so that it is well cared for. And we create something called the home book, which is even more value added to those things being done because it gives the buyer a real sense. Right. So we probably have lots more we can share with <laughs> yeah. you. So you're going to want to call and talk to Candace or myself at 613-860-4663. Mm -hmm. And also, Candace, you have a property or a couple of properties yeah. that we just want to feature real quick here. Yeah, so I have a couple. They're both uh, in Embram, just outside of Embram. One with a whole bunch of acreage uh, just over... Uh, Two acres. That's a whole bunch? Well, That's I mean, two. for the city of Embram. Okay. Or the story town? is 3.17. 3. Okay. So it's, it's a, a for the town, it's a good size. Because it's right acreage. at the edge of town. So it's, it actually is close proximity to the, vil the town amenities. Right. That's right. And it has a lovely um, orchard on the property. Um, so they have many berry bushes, many trees, apples, pears, plums, that sort of thing. And then um, it has a lovely home with an above ground pool, um, a bunch of sheds and outbuildings, a lovely large size garage, um, granite in the kitchen, um, lovely open country kitchen. It feels like a park. It does feel like a park. Yeah, and you feel like you're you're in a park. Yeah. The trees are gorgeous. The trees are gorgeous, and it's a great place to entertain as well. And four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. So really good okay. value. Great value. Mm -hmm. And then you have another one that's brand spanking new. So brand you want to call new. her. It's private to her at this point. So yeah. you may want to call Candace specifically and ask her about it. And mm -hmm. it is going to be, or it is, just under three hundred. Just 000. under three hundred thousand. Yeah, uh, two bedroom bungalow. Um, beautiful brick on the outside, above ground pool again, um, nice garage, and then the inside they've just redone the um, bathroom, gorgeous bathroom, like a bathroom you'd expect in a $600,000 house, so you will not be disappointed with that bathroom. And then a really nice kitchen and, and layout for uh, entertaining as well, and then in the basement it's all open, so you have a nice really nice layout. And it's nice when they're open in the lower levels because you have so much functional choice. Mm -hmm. You can choose to use the space however you want. Whether you want to partition it a little bit or leave it open, you've got so many options. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So thanks for joining me today, Candice. <laughs> it's been really cool to chat about what do I need to do mm -hmm. to get my home ready for market and where do I spend the big money? And, and most of the money that you're going to spend is little money. Absolutely. For I don't know, what would we say? One to $10,000, mm -hmm. generally speaking, would be what we might recommend, depending on the home and depending on how long. If we have deferred maintenance, meaning maintenance that never got done, that's a different conversation. Yes, yeah. You know, you will sell your, any home is saleable, so that's the great thing to remember. It doesn't matter whether you don't do any of the stuff we talk about, because right. price will take care of all of it. Yes, it will. Right. So if you have questions or you'd like to connect with us at all, DeckerTeam.com, or if you have suggestions for a show or questions, chri.ca is also where you can go, and you can listen to us there too. Thanks for joining me, Candice. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.